Hey, Dan here. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a Michelangelo 2.5, how to run the software, and how to draw pictures like this one. It takes just a few minutes right out of the box. Let's do this. Here we have our kit with a link back to where you purchased it from, where you, or a QR code that does the same thing. That'll help you find all of the tutorials and setup guides and our forums with lots of friendly people. Here are the electronics. Um, here's the pen holder. The pen goes in here. Here are the motor mounts. They're the same in both or the two and the three model. These are the bottle holders and some extra zip ties for attaching your belts. These are the belts. There's three meters of belt in here and suction cups. Here we have the basic setup. So you see I've mounted the motor mounts on the corners here by tightening these two screws and these two screws. If you want to mount this on a glass or on a whiteboard, you take these four screws out, you keep the piece of wood, and you put your suction cups in these holes. Same thing goes for the electronics up here. Now because I'm testing this kit before we ship it, I've only taped it to the top. You can use the four mounting holes in the corners to screw it permanently to whichever surface you prefer. I've also marked the center with a piece of tape because I'm going to use that for calibration later. And for convenience, I've measured ahead of time in millimeters the size of the board so I can use that as a reference when I run the software. I have to tell the robot the distance between this point and this point, which conveniently is the two corners of the wood. I also have to know the height of the board so that I can correctly position the paper in the center. If you want to cheat and tell that, that the machine is shorter than it actually is, then you'll be able to position the paper higher. That's your call. For purposes of demonstration, I've gone and told it what the real truth is. Now your water bottles, here's your holder, and you've used, I've used two zip ties, and I've put about 100 grams of water in here. That's 100 milliliters of water. I've also attached with a little, you see I've folded it over and put one of the zip ties here. That creates a pulley effect, so the bottle doesn't travel all the way to the floor and hit anything that might be down there. Same thing's true on the other side near the power plug. You really don't want this to catch on the power wires because then it will skip on the teeth of the pulley and it will mess up your drawing. If you hear a faint buzzing sound when the machine is running, it's probably because one of these screws has come loose. Tighten them down real good and your machine will be very, very quiet, almost musical. Now to attach your pen holder, these cables match colors, real easy. And you see again here, I've folded this over double with one zip tie. They slip right off the screws if you want, and you can adjust the, them along the screw to get an, the angle that's best for the pen that you choose. I like regular old Sharpies. I guess the last thing is this little finger down here is what lifts the pen off the paper. As you can see, it doesn't stick out very far. So your Sharpie has to stick out less than that when the finger is straight out. To lift the pen off the paper and when the finger turns sideways the sharpie still has to stick through so that it touches the paper it's a difference of maybe two or three millimeters so be very precise with that and you'll get great quality drawings now let's take a look at the software and fire this thing up so here i'm looking at the software that i've just started i've got a preview of my robot in the size that i want i've got the water bottles I've got the drawing, I've got the conversation with the robot, and down here I've got advanced commands that I can type and click send. I can talk to it with G code. Then up here I've got connect and disconnect, settings, driving it around manually in millimeters, setting the speed, driving to the edges of the paper or going home, as well as set home. And when you start, connect, then set home, then open your file, and then draw it. That's the basic process. I'll walk you through those each one at a time. First things first is connect, which opens a menu with all your possible connections. Now this is disconnect and you get a friendly message down here saying hello and these buttons become active. So now you can go to settings, drive around, and set home. To open your settings, you click the settings tab up here when you're connected. Now you'll have the dimensions of your robot, how much belt you'll need if you're trying to set up something special with custom, 
We've got um, some numbers that matter in the Michelangelo 3 and some testing. If I push left in, you'll see the pen holder move towards the left motor. If I push left out, it moves away. Right in, right out. Great. If you want to flip the image for drawing on the inside of a window when people are going to see it from the outside, choose this checkbox, Flip for Glass. This is the Paper Settings tab. Here you set the size of the paper on which you are going to draw your picture. I'm going to choose U.S. Letter and it fills in the dimensions in millimeters. I can tell it landscape or portrait as well as a, mar a safety margin around the edge of the paper. This is the Pen Settings tab. Here you choose the diameter of the pen tip on the paper, the maximum speed of the robot, the angle for the lifting finger of the servo, and how long to delay when lifting and lowering the pen to reduce the amount of jitter in the image. It's worth noting that every time you change the settings, you should reload an image, regenerate it or reopen the file because the previous G-code is based on your old settings. So when you reopen it, it will recalculate the G-code with the new settings. Now that we've got our settings ready, we can do creative control 